Hey folks, Ray at bcvramrecord.com here to give you your first look at CV Arcade. Now you may be wondering what the heck CV Arcade is, and frankly, I think you'll probably still be wondering what the heck it is by the time we get to the end of this video. Uh, but still, we'll, we'll give it a shot, we'll, we'll go for it, uh, and I'm trying to explain what it is from an app standpoint, but first you have to understand a little bit of history. Um, now you've probably heard of the CVR World Cup, uh, that's the eSports indoor cycling kind of competition of sorts. They've been doing competitions the last few years, primarily or exclusively on the Zwift platform, uh, and those events have been held mostly like in indoor velodromes and stuff like that, uh, where they've gathered people from a given continent or the world, pulled them together, and done indoor Zwift racing, essentially. Uh, but that, that was a separate company, um, and that was run all by this, this one guy that essentially has a lot of money to throw at that, uh, but Zwift didn't really endorse it that much. They didn't really, they didn't really help, so to speak. And, and those two companies always kind of butted heads. I think from the CVR standpoint, they wanted more access into Zwift, both from a technology standpoint as well as a platform perspective. So, meanwhile, from the Zwift standpoint, they saw esports or CVR as kind of getting on their their stage like that's one of those things that you know Zwift wanted to own that entire platform that entire picture that entire whole thing and CVR was sort of just kind of buttoned in there so those two companies always never really got along all that well and CVR finally said you know what we're gonna make our own platform you know screw you Zwift and this is this is our thing and and this is what they came up with. Um, and so back this past fall, they, they announced this and they announced on Twitter, they showed some pictures of this and people thought they were joking. Um, this was like a teaser and people were like, oh, that's funny. Ha, ha. No, it's actually what it looks like. Uh, and it's pretty horrendous. Uh, and so I signed up for the beta just like every other person out there. And early this week, I got my invite along with quote, thousands of other people. Um, and I figured I'd walk you through the app a little bit, just to give you a little flavor of things. And then I'll jump on the bike and we'll pedal a little bit, like five or 10 meters. And then I'll, yeah, you'll see why in a second. So this is the app here. Uh, once you go ahead and open up the app and you get it all installed, which by the way, installation was a complete cluster. Uh, I tried to install it first on my Mac and it didn't, it installed, but like it wouldn't run, like the windows were all wonky. So then I installed my PC, but then that meant that my Mac was already authorized, had to put a license key in. Whole thing is just way too complex. Uh, but once you get it installed, you immediately get into this window right here. And this is like your home track. And this is your your home, I guess. Like it's your your route, your something. Uh, and once you hit a certain speed, I think it's 24 kilometers an hour, then it takes you, it transports you to uh, the track of the day. Uh, so it's like world switching, except you don't ask for it. It just happens automatically. Uh, and then you can go to other worlds as well. So I'll show you that now. Uh, we'll just kind of walk through the menu a little bit. Uh, I clicked that the hamburger thing down left hand side there, the three little dashes. And this brought me up here to the menu. And you can see there's a bunch of options here. Uh, probably way too many options, but that's all right. So event is where I can look at events. Uh, and you can see that there's no one in any of these. Like some of these they say there is, like there's, it's hard to say if it's 12 out of two players or two players out of 12 spots. I've, either way, I've gone to those places and, and nobody's there. Um, so best I can tell, there's no one else on the entire platform except for me today at this very point in time, which is midday on a Wednesday. I, you know, certainly kind of a low time frame, but I'm sure if I looked on Zwift, there would be like 8,000 people right now. So that's a bit of a challenge, but uh, nonetheless, instead there's tracks. And the way tracks work is that you see these tracks right here. I have Raymaker's Homeworld. That's my world here. Uh, and you can make your own tracks, by the way. I will might briefly show that to you. Um, but I click another track. So I can click on Kayla's, Kayla's track, Kayla's mountain track. I clicked on this mountain bike course one earlier a little bit, and I click on join. And then once I do that, uh, the app goes ahead and it teleports me over to that. And uh, we'll see if it'll show this crazy animation or not. If it's going to show up. There we go. That's the animation I was looking for. Yeah, look at that. Uh, so anytime you think about things in this app, I would think about this animation right here uh, and wonder what was going through these folks' mind when they made this. Because this is pretty much this is a lot of what you're thinking all the time. And so it teleports you over there and eventually it'll show that screen. Okay, so here we are in this new world. Uh, in theory, we're here. Uh, all I see is that's the middle of a lake. If I press the C for camera button, I can kind of move around a little bit. Uh, but that's the problem right there is that if you don't start pedaling immediately, you get sent back to your own home world. It's like, 
you could make an entire political joke there I won't make but basically like the second you try to go somewhere else you're back some it's so confusing like who thought that was a good idea it's a horrible idea um, I went there for a reason maybe I just went to the bathroom for a second for a short riding maybe I went to fill my water bottles up why on earth would you then make me go back and then click Speaking of which, some might say I might be overly harsh for this beta side of things. Uh, I don't think so. I think when you send out a product to thousands of people, thousands of people, uh, and advertise that and make a big PR push around that, then you're opening yourself up to people trying it. And I waited just like everyone else to try this, so this isn't like some special access media or anything like that. Um, this is people that are looking at this wondering, is this a viable alternative to Zwift? Uh, if I click on workout here, since apparently the, the replay wasn't working, you do not have an active CVR World Cup training subscription. Click here to sign up. Can I click? Oh, that was probably a bad idea. I clicked. Okay, so now I can apparently upload a fit file, um, or I could looks like choose another workout as well. Uh, yeah, this is all really confusing. Uh, so I'm going to show you that some of the profile stuff here, which is what they recommend. I can choose my tire type there, so I can if I click this drop down here, I can choose uh, a bunch of different tires, which is kind of cool. So. Uh, we'll choose the Grand Prix since those are pretty good ones. Uh, I can choose my position. So hands on hoods, drops, crouch torso. Yeah, hidden tiger crouching dragon. Uh, and the entire pressure right there, it's a little high. So we'll do that. And I'll click on update. And let's see if that, that did that. Maybe I just took change ride. I think change ride brings me back over to the actual, yeah, that's right. The change ride brings me over to where I can change my bike. Um, now I have, you know, obviously a pretty common looking motorcycle there because this is a cycling game. Why are we in motorcycles? And I don't, I don't get it. Like they try to defend some of this stuff back in November and people were like, what? And I would have thought by now, like the default would have been a bike, just a bike, any bike really. Like even a tricycle would have been just fine. Uh, instead, we've got like these, motorcycle looking things and I'm not sure who they're appealing to here. Um, so they have what are called Cade coins or maybe it's Katie coins. It's not really clear. I'm supposed to pronounce that. And this is where you buy coins that you can then spend things on. Uh, so again, like a lot of other games out there, not so much like Zwift and other cycling games, but uh, a lot of games have this concept of buying, um, you know, an artificial currency that you can use within the game. So I could buy something here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them my money. Um, I click close. And if I go down here, I can see what to spend it on. So for example, I can choose a rider pass, which is 950 coins coins and uh, and it gives me ex exclusive beta content only available for a limited time champions ride skins um, if we go down to event pass there again the ability to purchase for 2700 coins so now we're talking almost 30 bucks um, all these different events and classes and stuff like that so their model here is clearly going to be selling you stuff um, in the game as opposed to you having just a one-time fee uh, and if we go down to let's see workout pass uh, this is where you can go ahead and get, you know, structure workouts in there and whatnot for effectively 3,400 coins or 30-ish small dollars um, and the same sort of thing. But hardware is where it gets really interesting. So all those are like, okay, I guess. Um, but hardware is, you start off on the left-hand side. You can see the right-hand side is clearly pulled in from uh, Amazon type, you know, bundles, essentially they've created. Uh, so you can see there, there's like an indoor uh, spinning bike there along with the IQ squared power meter, which is kind of funny since it hasn't even started shipping yet. Uh, some trainers floating up there and I can scroll down here and you can see budget value, uh, premium includes the, uh, Cyclops hammer by the looks of it. Um, and then a bike. And so check this out. You see on left-hand side, you see what kind of experience do you want? Um, I'm going to go with, with value, I guess. Um, do you have a bike? Yes or no? Do you have a bike? Are you kidding me? Do you have a bike? Who who uses this platform without a bike? That's like, I, I can't even imagine a comparison to that. That is so bizarre. And there's so, so much of how they don't understand their market here. Um, yes, I have a bike. Uh, do you have a heart rate monitor? That's a logical question. Yes. Uh, do you have a Mac or PC? No. Uh, I'm on a Mac or PC. How do you think I got to this menu? Uh, do you want in-home assembly? So check this out. If you look here, what they're doing is they're basically offering bike trainer assembly and setup. So they're pitching an upsell uh, for some unknown amount of money at this point to go ahead and set up your uh, bike trainer, everything indoors using Amazon Home Services. 
This part, this part is the only part of this entire experience which could actually be brilliant. Uh, one of the things that you know people often talk about on Zwift, especially, but even other trainer, trainer, indoor trainer platforms, is the complexity in getting things set up. Like, how do you get the trainer set up and accessories and cables and amp plus sticks and all that stuff working together? You know, for many people watching this channel, it may be kind of obvious, but for uh, a lot of other people, maybe your spouse, it may not be so obvious. And so how do you get people into that that are good cyclists, but are not necessarily great tech people? Uh, and so this sort of stuff actually makes a ton of sense. And outsourcing it through like an Amazon Home Services sort of scenario also makes a ton of sense. So that is at least going in the right general direction. Do you want uh, in-home assembly? I click on yes, it then asks me a delivery address. If I click on no, it, it still asks me a delivery address and I won't put that in because I don't really wanna do that. Um, oh heck, let's put one in and see what happens. Oh, there we go, look at that. This is very similar to what we're seeing, what we're seeing right now with uh, Zwift doing kind of their whole marketplace thing. Uh, so right now it's gonna say that for $993, they'll give me a Cyclops Magna Smart, Smart Trainer. That costs 575. Uh, so they're basically just using Amazon prices for everything here because that's, that's a pretty much a retail price. A speed sensor from Koss for $23. Uh, Cyclops skewer for 10 bucks, which is strange because I thought it actually came with a trainer. Um, the CVR keyboard bundle for $118, an amp plus stick for $18, a USB extension cord, a mini PC for $131, um, a monitor for 107 Who wants to do this on a 22 inch monitor? And then there's things like the added equipment mats and front riser blocks and all this kind of stuff. Um, and a game controller. Uh, so this isn't horrible, actually. So the idea of what they're trying to do here, while very clumsy, um, is actually pretty interesting. That's something that Zwift, in fact, themselves have been doing. It's just not necessarily as like customizable as this. But to be fair, I don't think you need all this stuff either. Like some of those things are are just sort of we bundled in a weird way. Like why would you need a speed sensor? Because that's already part of the smart trainer. That's that's what it transmits. It transmits speed. Um, so I don't really understand that. But that's that's interesting. I'm. I'm I'll give them like points for creativity or something there. Okay, so that is that is that from the basic standpoint. If I click on the Amp Plus logo down in the corner here, I can get into the Amp Plus pairing menu. Um, and to close this, you can see everything's kind of clumsy over the top of each other, but I can see the devices. I can see my heart rate sensor there. I can see my trainer there, the power. Uh, Cadence just says it comes from the Cadence source, which is fine. Uh, and then that is pretty much it. I think at this point, we're gonna jump on the bike and I'll show you how it works there. Okay, so here we are in the game itself. Uh, now, in this case, I can go ahead and change the camera view by just pressing the C button right there, and that iterates around to, to change to my different views of my motorcycle. Um, and you can see I go to like the start and the finish line. That's kind of a nice touch. You can, in fact, you can just change to that start and finish line. Useful again from a racing standpoint. Uh, I can press the V button there to kind of enable this mini camera up at the top. Uh, now it's blocked by this message that I haven't been able to figure out how to get rid of, um, but I can just keep on pressing the, mute, the V button and it iterates through the different camera views at the top and eventually it'll turn it off if I keep on pressing the button. I think one more time does it, there we go. Um, so if I start pedaling, this is my home world. This is the one I'm supposed to decorate with my social media photos and stuff according to them. Um, so you can see right now I'm keeping the speed below that 14 or so kilometers per hour. If I exceed that and if I go up to 24 kilometers an hour, then it'll drop me into today's world. Um, so you can see the track of the day there. So uh, this is, this is it. Um, this is the graphics. This is what I'm supposed to tweak. Uh, so there we go. Now I've just, I've crossed over to 24 kilometers an hour. So that little archway thing was like my teleportal into this next world. So it's going ahead and it's, it's taking me where I need to go apparently. There we go. Kind of keep a speed there. And now I'm, now I'm somewhere else. I don't really know where I am to be honest, but Casey just went past me. Um, which is the first time I've seen someone, by the way, now that I think about this. The first time I've seen anyone else in this game. So people do exist. That's a good starting point. If I change my camera view, there I am. Maybe you going backwards. There we go. Okay, so now we're back on the bike. I see someone up ahead here. I'm gonna go find out what the dealio is. Let's see, is this still the same person or is it another person? Uh, it's Jasper, Jasper Anchor. So now what's interesting here, knowing Jesper and knowing that he's actually a pretty good cyclist, 
and then I'm only pedaling at about 150 watts right now, he's probably using the controller because in this game, you can use the keyboard or the controller to go ahead and be in the game. So you don't actually have to be on a bike at all. You can go ahead and just simply do like you would in a normal game. So there's Casey. So that seems to be the only two people on this map here. Um, I know Jesper is working with C Barricade a bit, so probably explains why he's on there. Uh, but let's see if I can, should be out there's a start and finish line again on this short little loop. So I should be able to change my position. There we go, by using the left and right arrows. So this allows me to corner. So for example, if I'm coming around a corner, because you can't actually crash your bike. Let me see if I can do that. I think it's only on certain tracks that you can do that. So throwing some waters into that. So I'm at 600 watts right now. Let me go to the outside, see if that'll crash it. And nope, no luck crashing. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you a different world now. So I'm gonna switch over that. So go up the top here to track. And we'll choose the Saturn circuit complete. Join. And here we go, different world. Change your camera view a little bit. Obviously Saturn, pretty straightforward. Now when we do get on hills, um, I certainly feel that with this trainer because it is a smart trainer, a smart control trainer. And so it's something that does actually work. I've felt that a few times in some other different courses. And this is kind of, that's sort of it. Like there's not much else out here. There's not much in terms of scenery besides the planets going by. Reminds me a lot of F-Zero back in the day as a kid growing up. Uh, but again, different tracks. I think there's a mountain jungle track we'll go check out real quick. I think it's some Kayla's mountain track, I think is what it is. So teleportation time. Try and change the camera view. See if we can get a little bit smoother. There's the hill. So they definitely haven't fine-tuned the, the incline changes. That was like, boom, it just hit in right there. And I don't see on here the exact incline, but you know, I'm pushing like 350 watts right now. And this certainly doesn't seem like 350 watt kind of hills. So one of the things you just saw right there is I said I gotta start pedaling or it'll transport me back to the home world. So if I don't pedal, I get kicked out of the country and back to home again. So I'm not sure if I'm about to hit a rock wall or just a hill. It certainly feels like a rock wall. There over the top. Come on. And the trainer still isn't kicked out of that yet. So it's still like almost impossible. Yeah. I'm 300 watts, supposedly going downhill. There we go, come on. Nope. And, and that's, that's that. Okay, so I'm not really sure what to say at this point. Like I think it's clear it needs a lot of work. And I think in particular, it's clear it just needs like a different change of direction altogether. There's just too many options. Things like the workout and the calendar functionality, all that kind of stuff that's just sort of half baked. They just need to yank all that out and start with just getting like, two to four tracks figured out. Like take out the track builder that you can do, all that stuff, and just simply go with the basics. And then once I've got that figured out, then go beyond that. And that's what we saw as Zwift do over the course of the last however many years it's been, four or five years, something like that. Um, I start off with the basics, one world, one track, then add things like structural workouts and training plans and all that kind of stuff. Um, all the, the things that you can you know add and get with experience points and so on. Versus today, this is just, it's like, bumblebee soccer of of the trainer app world um, anyways there you go that's just a look at things maybe things will change keep in mind there are a lot of other non-zwift options out there that are worthwhile checking out that are legit options today uh, vertigo ruby sufferfest um road grand tours trainer road kino app 
all those are great options uh, that are definitely like way more advanced than this today. Uh, and I think they're doing really cool stuff. So it's worthwhile seeing what those other platforms give and offer. And uh, you can check out all my videos on those somewhere on the screen here. Anyways, thanks for watching. Go ahead and like that like button if you find this interesting. It really helps the channel quite a bit. Have a good one.